The CPU on the PIC32 allows up to 96 events to generate interrupts. And the PIC32 uses most of them. And it also allows up to 64 interrupt service routines. And often when we talk about uh, these 64, we refer really to the address that they're held at, or we call them vectors. So because we have more interrupt request events than we have vectors to hold interrupt service routines, that means some of the IRQs have to share the same interrupt service routine. And we can see that from this table in the data sheet. <coughs> it tells us here that the core timer interrupt gets IRQ number zero as well as vector number zero. Some other interrupts here, and we continue down the table. And down here we see the 23rd IRQ, which is the SPI1 communication fault, has vector number 23, but also SPI1 receive and SPI1 transfer, which have different IRQs, have the same interrupt service routine and the same vector. Now, associated with each interrupt, we have a number of special function registers that control their operation. And in particular, we have the interrupt enable control registers, which we write IECX, where X is equal to 0, 1, or 2. And these are interrupt enable. Control. And the reason that we have three of these registers, IEC 0, 1, and 2, is that we have 96 IRQs. Each of these special function registers has 32 bits. So three of them makes 96 bits. And every bit of IEC 0, 1, or 2 controls whether one of the interrupts is enabled or not. If it's a 0 for that interrupt, then that interrupt cannot, or that IRQ cannot generate interrupts. If it's a one, then it can. So we've got 96 bits to tell us which of our 96 interrupt events actually can generate interrupts. We also have the interrupt flag status registers. And these bits correspond to the same bits of the IEC registers. And they tell us whether an interrupt has been requested or not. So if we have a 1 at the appropriate bit in the registers, it means that an interrupt has been requested. If it's a 0, then none has been requested. And the last set of registers we have are the interrupt priority control registers, IPCY, where Y is equal to 0 to 15. And these hold the priority of the various interrupt service routines. So whereas these two uh, sets of registers have one bit per IRQ, the IPC registers have five bits per ISR, per vector. So interrupt priority control. And as I mentioned, this has five bits per vector. And those bits are separated into priority and sub-priority for each interrupt service routine, each vector. So let's take a look at that. Here's that table again, but now with some more information. Uh, we've cut off the source here, but this is core timer uh, interrupt, which again has IRQ number zero, vector number zero. And then it's got one bit in the IFS0 special function register. Because it's the first, it's the zeroth interrupt source, it's the first bit of the first register. The first register is IFS0. So the zeroth bit of that register, also the zeroth bit of the IEC0 register. And then it's got five, or sorry, three priority bits and two sub-priority bits. The three priority bits encode whether uh, the priority is zero up to seven. If it's zero, that interrupt is actually disabled. Uh, so really it's only priorities one to seven. And then there's also two sub-priorities, or three, sorry, two bits for the sub-priority to encode value zero to three. So if you have an interrupt executing at priority five, for example, 
and sub-priority zero. And another interrupt comes in with interrupt five and sub-priority three, it's still going to be made to wait until the current interrupt has ended. So a sub-priority cannot override a current interrupt service routine in process. On the other hand, if you have two interrupt service routines waiting to be addressed, uh, whichever one has the higher priority and sub-priority will be attended to first. So here are four of our interrupt sources here. These are the bits associated with each of those interrupt uh, service routines over here in the priority and the interrupt requests here in the flag and the enable. So because we need five bits per vector, uh, the way the PIC32 does it is it uses one 32-bit register to hold the priority and sub-priority for four different ISR, four different vectors. It uses five bits for each, so four times five is 20 bits. There's 12 wasted bits in that register. And then you have the next register down in the interrupt priority control. So that's why we need 16 of those registers, 16 times the priority information for four vectors. 16 times four makes 64 vectors overall.